Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on comic book inking. Here are my materials. I have the Copic Multi Liner 3 and 5 millimeter, as well as the brush tip. The best paper that I've used is the Bristol Vellum or Plate Finish. It's very smooth, so you can get a lot of details on this paper. The brush I use the most is the Windsor Newton Series 7 number 2 brush. You can also get a set of four brushes. That's very handy. The Higgins Black Magic drawing ink is very solid. And for a white, Windsor Newton Gouache Permanent White is a great white to use. This is the most basic list. Let's move on to exercises. The most important thing about inking is making nice lines. When you make a long line, it's a good practice to lock your wrist and use your shoulder. Draw with your arm. This allows you to make long lines that are very straight and very smooth. It takes a little bit of practice. If you use your wrist, your line will arc and it will be impossible to make those nice long lines. The next point is connecting the dots. It's very self-explanatory. Just make two dots and connect the dots in different directions. C curves and S curves is the next exercise. What you want to do is make nice smooth arcs and avoid swiggly lines. These lines are very elegant. A dynamic curve is a curve that's a little bit more curvy on one side and a little bit straighter on the other side. You can try some of these also. Next is cursive and terse lines. Cursive lines have thin ends and are thicker in the middle. So this is a practice in line variation. Terse lines are thick at one end and thin at the other end. The thing that's nice about terse lines is that you can use it to indicate the light direction. So you have a circle and a light that's on top. Then the bottom right would be the side in shadow. Hatching is a series of lines that uh, create a tone. You can hatch with thin lines, you can hatch with thick lines. You can hatch with wider spacing, and then there's cross hatching, which is a pattern overlapping another pattern. Feathering is the next technique. It's basically when you have a solid stroke and uh, little teeth that come out of it. The teeth represent a soft edge, a transition between the light and the dark area. Usually you feather against the form. Say you have a cylinder and the light is on the top left, casting a shadow on the bottom right. And along the length of the cylinder is called with the form. Feathering would go against the form, which uh, should curve around. This is the traditional way of doing it. This is a way of indicating bounce light. 
you could use white paint for this. Another way of showing form is to hatch and use feathering together. The last thing I want to show you today is a game called Battleship. Draw a line in the middle of a piece of paper. You and your friend take one side each and draw little circles that represent your battleships. Then place your pen on your ship and fire away. After you go, he gets a turn or she gets a turn and you cross out the ships that have been shot down. I know you're thrilled. You can try an alternate version where you turn the paper sideways so you can practice drawing lines sideways. And that's it for this week. Next week, I am going to talk about more inking vocabulary and I'm going to start analyzing Jack Kirby and Neil Adams. Stay tuned, subscribe. If you guys would like to support, check out my Patreon page and see you next time. Thanks.